2023 mindset, which one is it? Aggressive, cautionary, careful. Well, I think it's all those things. I think it's everything. I'm just gonna give you a few of my insights into what I think is gonna happen this year. So one of the hot topics is for 2023 for sure is gonna be the property market, residential property market, probably commercial property market too. And most of you know that I am a major shareholder or the major shareholder in a business called Yellow Brick Road Home Loans and we're a very big lender so we get a good insight as to what people are doing when it comes to borrowing money to buy houses and or refinancing or maybe having to sell a property. And why should you care about property prices? Well, if you already own a home, it doesn't really matter what the property is valued at, as long as you can afford to pay the mortgage and you live there, you're enjoying the property, that's fine by you. It might affect those people who are trying to sell a property because they might not get the same price they were expecting to get a year ago. It's good for people who are buying property because they're gonna buy properties cheaper. By the way, if you're not interested in buying a property or if you don't already own a property and have a mortgage, well, it's not gonna affect you at all. You can give a fuck. So you're gonna live your life no matter what. Nothing's gonna change. The most important thing for you is that you make sure your job stays secure. So what you wanna make sure of, if you don't own a property or if you don't have a mortgage, is that the net effect on the economy of what the Reserve Bank is doing doesn't in some way impact your job or doesn't affect in some way your ability to earn more money or ask your employer for more money. So that's what you've got to keep your eye out for. The relationship between property prices and rises and falls in property prices is a function of affordability. Affordability is a function of the interest rate that's being charged. And as we know, interest rates have gone up, I think nine times in 2022 and potentially a couple of more times in 2023. But what most people don't realize is it is a lag effect. So the lag effect is that we have an economic delay in interest rate rises of about three months. Okay, it takes time to change interest rates by the lenders after the Reserve Bank makes its announcements. So we are now going to start to experience the full effect of all the eight rate rises that occurred in 2022. And if we get any more rate rises in 2023, which I reckon we will, then we will see a major affordability issue start to arise. That's really important to understand. Then if we go back to where I started, property prices are a function of affordability. Affordability is a function of interest rates as they are affecting people right now. Then expect people start to feel a bit of stress. So that will have a major economic effect across the whole country, just generally. And by the way, that's what the Reserve Bank has designed the interest rates to do. They do want us to slow down the economy. My view, and I take the Christopher Joy view, I'm moving a little bit away from the stupid Coquillas view, which he and I do a podcast once a month where we talk about the interest rates and the Reserve Bank, etc. We do a podcast which we put up every single month, a couple of days before the Reserve Bank meets. But I'm more now towards the Chris Joy theory. And the Chris Joy theory is he's expecting residential property prices to have a major collapse in 2023 once the lag effect has a full effect. Now, I'm expecting somewhere between 15 and 20% fall in residential property prices across the board. I'm talking about on average. This is an average fall. And it's gonna fall, the fall, house price falls or the unit price falls or the townhouse price falls or the Paddington Terrace price falls will occur in those environments where people's wages haven't gone up, wages remain static, and their cost of living has gone up. Now, I can't tell you which areas they are, but this will contribute to a national average reduction in house price or dwelling prices across the board, Australia, by somewhere between 15 and 20% 20 in 2023, if the Reserve Bank continues. And this is the proviso. If the Reserve Bank continues to increase the official cash rate. And the first indicator of that is gonna be you know, the first Tuesday in February this year. And if you're living at home, you don't have a mortgage, but mum and dad have a mortgage, start to be a bit conscious and aware of the cost of living that's increased in your household, the place you're enjoying. Mum and dad are gonna pay a mortgage and the cost of living has gone up, electricity price has gone up, air conditioning systems are gonna cost more money to run, heaters are gonna cost more money to run in 2023 in the winter, you know, the food costs more money, which you're probably enjoying. So try and work out how you can help out at home.
you know, take the initiative, turn the lights off as you walk out of the room. Where is machine learning and artificial intelligence gonna take us to? And OpenAI has built this thing called ChatGPT. So the first question I asked was, what do you think about ChatGPT? Asking it to tell me what it thinks about itself. And, uh, and I got a very interesting answer. I think it's gonna be a lot more use of artificial intelligence or machine learning and then the artificial intelligence that comes out of that. In other words, like we all do it. We, we as human beings, we walk around machine learning. In other words, we make observations or we read things. We'll make observations, that's another way of reading things. Um, we make observations and we draw deductions. In other words, we come up with intelligence. So the computers or you know, programs do exactly the same. They go and learn by observing what's, for example, on the internet, and then they draw conclusions, which becomes what they call artificial intelligence. It's just intelligence, but it's created not by our own brain, but by a, an artifice, a computer, a program. So businesses will use it a lot more. And for the future, I think artificial intelligence, people like Harrison AI are gonna use this a lot. Um, I think that other organizations who are trying to build marketing plans will start to work out where the messaging is by using artificial intelligence or machine learning to build an artificial intelligent position in order to then to build a message. And they might use chat GPT to build a message, by the way. What message should I tell to Australians who are trying to borrow money to buy a home? That might be something Yellow Brick Road uses. I see big future for the inputs of machine learning and artificial intelligence in the field of marketing and advertising. Artificial intelligence or machine learning in relation to health I think will be the biggest take up of how artificial intelligence and machine learning works. You're looking to be prescriptive in a scientific way about a future outcome of some instance that's occurring in relation to someone's health. It could be mental health, physical health, whatever the case might be. And I can just see the world changing completely when it comes to the health sector. And this will help grow the health sector and it will help be much more predictive about outcomes that hopefully will be for the benefit of Australians and everybody in the world. We've had a bit of time to reflect over the Christmas period and the early New Year period. You know, I'm looking at all the narrative that's sort of floating around the joint. And one of the big narratives, of course, is the referendum on the voice or a, a voice for Indigenous people in Australia. And Prior to probably the beginning of 2021, 2020, um, I really probably didn't have a view on these sorts of things. And I might have said, well, why do the indigenous people need a voice? I don't mean in a negative sense why, but just why? And I've, I have spoken on a number of occasions my experience with my whiskey business, The Bird, and my business partners in The Bird and their unbelievable awareness and appreciation of how indigenous people live and work and how the concept of country operates and how important the land is to people and how important it is for indigenous people to have a voice. Not because we want them to go in and veto things. It's not, for me, it's not about that anymore. It's about what I can learn from what they've got to say. <laughs> they've got something to tell me. They have been here for 40,000 years or more and they have passed down in the traditional sense, lots of knowledge and learnings that me and most people in Australia never have access to. So therefore it's important, I think, to hear what they've got to say. And if the voice, this parliamentary voice, is one way we can start that program, then I'm all for it. Because I'm all for learning. I'm all for learning what's best for Australia, what's best for me, what's best for my community, what's best for the people who live in Australia to make us the best possible nation in the world. And we have an advantage over most nations in the world in that we have one of the oldest living communities, the indigenous people in the world. And they want to, and they want to talk to us. They want to improve the position of our great country. This is about nation building from my point of view. So I don't see it as a negative thing. I don't see the voice has been something that's gonna tell me what to do. That's not, that's not how it's framed. And I'm definitely not framing it in my mind that way. And also I, I spent a bit of time at Uluru 
towards the end of this year, uh, sorry, towards the end of 2022. And, and I, I met up with Gil McAdam and I had a long conversation with him about things like when should Australia Day be? You know, why should Australia Day be on that particular date or what other dates could we have it on or should we be considering other days? And I'm not trying to enter into a debate right now and I'm not trying to railway, railroad Australia Day as we all understand as we've been used to having it on that particular day. And I want all Australians to celebrate, I, I do. Don't get me wrong. I mean, I love it when everyone's running around flags and carrying on. But I just think we've become more aware as a nation to get on with everyone in our nation, not just Indigenous people, everybody. Indians, Greeks, Italians, French, whatever. Everybody. We're all going to get on because the bottom line is we all live here. We're going to do our best to work together. So I think we should all consider the merits of the voice referendum but consider it in a positive way as opposed to just thinking about it negatively. Oh, what am I going to lose? Let's think about what we might gain. A few years ago, I put out a little note about what I thought was important if governments were to be re-elected. Well, first of all, I said to secure our borders. Any government should have a policy who's going to be re-elected to be voted in has to have a border policy, border security, we have to have water security because water is going to become a much rarer asset class for the future. So governments, if you want to govern, make sure our water is secure, make sure our border is secure, make sure our energy is secure, and make sure our food is secure and our resources are secure. So energy is, comes from a resource that's in the ground that all Australians have ownership of and we grant a right to others to exploit it. And they pay royalty for it. Got it. Generally speaking, I'm not in favour of intervention in commerce by governments. In other words, I don't like governments to interfere in marketplaces or commerce. But there are exceptions. And those exceptions have been created by extraordinary circumstances. And one extraordinary circumstance is the war in Europe. And what it has shown us or shown, should be showing governments who we elect is that under these circumstances, which could be an indicator of the future of how we sit in the world, we must secure our resources and in particular, anything to do with energy resources. Therefore, I am fully in favour of state governments embargoing a certain percentage, like they've done in West Australia, a certain percentage of, for example, gas that does not get sold overseas at overseas prices, which are then much more expensive than what they should be locally, and that we should always keep or secure resources in Australia that are affordable for Australians. Therefore, we shouldn't be paying the tilt price that a war in the Ukraine has created in relation to gas prices globally. Now, I don't normally feel or take the view that a government should be interventionist in commerce, but in the welfare of all Australians, government should be interventionist because that's their role. That's what it is. That's what governing's called. Why, that's why governments are called governing, you know, because they govern. They, they make sure, it's a bit like if I'm driving a car too fast, Put a governor on the, on the accelerator. Stop me from driving too fast because I can put everybody in danger. We are therefore, as governments, we should be making sure we, we govern the country. We control the outcomes that are best for all Australians. And what's not good for us is for us paying ridiculous prices for gas and, gas and power when we, the Australians, have granted the right to exploit those assets We've granted the right to others to exploit those assets and they go and charge us a ridiculous amount of money. That's it. Secure borders, water, food resources, and every other resource, particularly in relation to energy. Be prepared to step left or right or straight down or cop, cop it on the chin. Be prepared. That's probably the motto for my mindset for 2023 until I see things start to normalize. And I don't think you're going to see that for a while in 2023. So be prepared to go whatever direction the market makes 
you go. And I'll be talking about it on my podcast. Don't worry, I'm going to be keep bringing it back to everybody, saying this is the way I see it. If it changes, I will tell you. But right now, be prepared for anything in 2023 because anything can actually happen. You know, we've got rights in Brazil. We've got the whole US thing going on at the moment about, you know, the, in their own parliament, you know, the Democrats and the Republicans and the lower house and the upper house, Congress and Senate. And we've got our own state election coming here in New South Wales very soon. We've got a new government, federal government here. We've got wars in Europe. We've got lots of shit going on, okay? Anything can happen. So be prepared. That's your mindset. Just be prepared. Okay, that's 2023. It's not a wrap. It's a kickoff. It's going to be a fucking rough ride. But the interesting thing is going to be cool. And if you agree or disagree, tell me below. Just tell me, give me your comments. Tell me what you think is going to happen. And I'm going to be bringing this to you on the Mentor Podcast. And I'm going to be bringing it to you on the Straight Talk Podcast as often as I possibly can. And I'll probably be popping up on lots of other screens around you. I'm going to be putting up on LinkedIn and Instagram and everywhere else, TikTok. And I'm going to go for it. This year is going to be a big year. And I'm going to be sharing as much as I possibly can with you. Enjoy the ride.